This is Ritesh Srinivasan and welcome to my channel. In this video, let's look at Gator Tron, which is a large clinical language model. So this is a collaboration between researchers of University of Florida and NVIDIA. Okay. So what is this large clinical language model? Okay. So let's go to this uh, PDF file over here. Okay. Uh, so this is downloaded from this uh, blog okay from nvidia where they talk about this particular model this is available uh, if you log in and register with the nvidia developer program uh, this content is available for free so from this uh, page i had downloaded this pdf file okay so what did they do over here right so they pre-trained a large BERT model which had 3.9 billion parameters okay on clinical largest clinical corpus which is all university of florida health nodes okay then they fine-tune this particular pre-trained model on downstream tasks so for this they required a supercomputer cluster okay which was available in the university of florida okay so how did they do this okay so for the data collection they had over 2 million patients and 50 million encounters okay on which they did pre-processing and this is data of past 10 years okay which included clinical notes progress procedures discharge summary radiology report okay so they did pre-processing by removing empty nodes removing duplicated nodes text normalization like encoding punctuation sentence and word tokenization and this is actually the size of the clinical health nodes which is close to 379 gb close to 197 million nodes they trained a BERT vocabulary based on clinical nodes from university of florida health and it had 100 GB of clinical text. They used byte pair encoding word segmentation, a 30K vocab size in cased format. Okay. For the pre-training corpora, they had two corpus uh, data sets. One is pilot and production. Uh, for the pilot, they used one by fourth of all UF clinical nodes. Number of words is 21 billion in this pilot. In the production uh, data set for pre-training, they had all UF clinical nodes, 82 billion words. PubMed articles abstract, 6 billion words. Wikipedia dump, 2.5 billion words. So for a total of close to 90 billion words. Okay, so this is a really huge uh, data set for pre-training and they had security and privacy considerations because this data had PHI. So they had to do it within their research vault, which is a HIPAA compliant secure computing environment, but with less computing power. Okay, uh, then they had to do a data transfer between this and the uh, supercomputer or the AI cluster. Okay. Then for pre-processing, they had issues because uh, this was close to 559 GB of clinical nodes. Um, so they also uh, contributed a script to allow merging small binary pre-training data uh, whereby they could parallelize the pre-processing steps. So they have some details over here on the pre-processing diagram, okay, block diagram. And for fine-tuning this particular model on downstream tasks, they focused on clinical named entity recognition. For this, the benchmark data sets are um, uh, 2010 I2B2 challenge and 2012 I2B2 challenge. Okay. And uh, they also did one real world application task, which is de-identification of protected health information in clinical notes. So these are two different fine tuning tasks. Okay. And they used baseline BERT models for comparison, like vanilla BERT, clinical BERT, bio BERT, blue BERT and biomechatron. Okay. So these were the basic uh, baseline BERT models for comparison. Okay. So how does the 2010 I2B2 or this uh, challenge data set looks like? So they have given examples over here. We'll look into that. Okay. So on the 2010 uh, named entity recognition challenge, uh, say if you have a text like this, the patient had a moderately dilated aortic root, a mildly dilated ascending aorta. So this is the problem over here. So here they say that in the ground truth, this is mentioned as problem. And Gatortron is able to detect it, but clinical word is missed on this particular, you know, uh, type of entity detection. So there are three entity types over here, problem, treatment, and test. Okay. Here is another example over here. Uh, so here you have 
uh, you know treatment okay so uh, particular thoracentesis uh, removal of 1.5 liters of fluid so that is the ground truth again gatoratron is performing better than clinical bird in detection of these entities okay now let's look at the performance comparison of gatoratron versus these other particular uh, what you call clinical domain and uh, normal bird models okay so if you look at over here um, normal bird which is on you know pre-trained from scratch size is 345 million parameters uh, data sets are wikipedia book corpus it has 84.7 percent entity level f1 on a2b2 2010 and 76 percent on 2012 okay now you have bioclinical bird which is on mimic nodes so it is more on the clinical domain you see some improvement over here 85.3 and 75.9 in terms of f1 scores okay then you have biobird large which is pubmed abstracts pmc full text further improvement and then you have gatortron which has 3.9 million parameters again trained from scratch which is 88.6 percentage and 79.8 percentage so you can see over here close to say two percent improvement over on the state of art right but in terms of parameter scaling this is nearly 10x okay this is 345 mil, uh, million and this is 3.9 billion okay so that is uh, what it is now uh, again they have kind of uh, you know summarized in terms of entity level true positives count over here and uh, yeah this is doing better than the other uh, models okay so finally here is a summary of the other models as well over here where you have a gatortron uh, which is on um, you know a smaller model 345 uh, million uh, parameters which is you know over here slightly lesser performance compared to the full model okay so now if you look at uh, you know they claim that this is state of art but if you look at the model sizes it's a 10x increase over here in terms of model size okay now if you look at state of art improvement also it is like uh, two percentage points or something over here right in terms of uh, say f1 scores in uh, uh, what do you call your entity recognition and in terms of de-identification it is like one percent over here if you compare it to say uh, uh, if you compare it to bioclinical bird it is much more over here but with respect to bio bird it is like one percent over here now the question is like yeah do you need to you know keep up with state of art by increasing the model size to such huge uh, parameters uh, so over here uh, the university of florida, uh, florida researchers had access to such high-end hardware which enabled this okay but for say a normal researcher to do this or but for say to put this kind of a model into a product it's really going to be tough in terms of hardware requirements right and the real reason why they wanted to do this was uh, you know again if you look at clinical data uh, it's quite interesting that uh, if you look at emr and uh, ehr data 80 percent of your data is present in uh, you know your uh, clinical unstructured information so that is why you require these kind of ai models okay and this unstructured information is currently not being really used for a lot of downstream tasks okay so the idea is that these kind of large models okay will help uh, researchers to speed up to identify relevant patients for life-saving clinical trials and other studies okay so what they claim over here is that as i said 80 percent of information that is valuable to research and physicians is contained in the full text clinical notes of patient medical records with the speed and precision of these large language models uh, these are made quickly accessible that is a kind of claims over here and they used really huge data over here and they used uh, you know some kind of a supercomputer to get this model okay but i'm still a little bit skeptical on how would this model perform on say some other data set okay because based on my experience i have seen these state of art models performing well on benchmarks but you know if you take it to a real life problem and you try using these models you see that you need to do a lot of fine tuning and uh, pre-processing and other things okay uh, considering that this was such a huge model, I had expected even higher improvements in terms of, uh, you know, performance measures on these benchmarks. Another thing is that probably we need more benchmarks 
with more annotated data for clinical domain not just the a2b2 data sets probably even larger data sets to you know further verify whether these large language models are really useful and uh, to improve the state of art as well as the practical application of such uh, large language models okay I hope this video or Gator Tron, a large clinical language model is useful for you. If you like the video, please like, share, subscribe to the channel. I will put the link to the paper on, on this model. Also a link to the uh, video over here where they've explained this large language model and how do you actually train such large language models using NVIDIA infrastructure. Okay. And also, uh, once you go to this uh, page and you register yourself over here, then you will be able to log in and download this PDF as well. See you in another video. Happy learning.